no one, no one wants to marry someone who never sees anything wrong with what they're doing. No one wants to marry someone who is stubborn, who takes no responsibility for the pain they cause. We were just talking about that. They never accept correction because they're not the one that needs correction. And they believe that they know it all. A teachable spirit is one of the most desirable and key character traits for success with God and man. And it is pretty critical to having favor with people around you too. We see many, many even come through here that have heard the truth, heard the truth, heard the truth, heard the truth, and they walk away. They just walk away from it. I would say there's far more people that are unteachable than what we would care to identify. In contrast, and very destructive and offensive to the kingdom of God than someone who is able to hear and understand what God is saying is a quiet and verbal, is the quiet or verbal know-it-all that just will not learn. Some are simply, they don't tell you that they're not listening, but you can tell by how they conduct their lives that they are not hearing anything that you say. So it can be a verbal non-compliance or it can be a quiet person who just ignores everything that is going on. And to marry such a person is disastrous to yourself, your children, and every good thing that God would want you to experience in this life because it will isolate you from your family, it will isolate you from your friends. That kind of a person has a way of polarizing your world around you. A teachable spirit is an essential quality in a life that no one can do without. It's absolutely critical to have a teachable spirit and we all need it, not just for today, but for our life. And we need to cultivate it because it doesn't just come naturally. And if you're going to have people close around you, you need to look for people who have teachable spirits and you need to run from those who don't. You don't want to align in life with people who are unteachable because you're going to experience a lot of heartache and a lot of trouble. Anyone who cannot take good and godly advice is not teachable. And anyone who never accepts their failures or wrongdoings and takes ownership of them and makes amends or is asks for forgiveness, they're not teachable. Everyone who wants to be with someone who will listen to him or her when they speak or give advice, who they're always changing everything just is always spinning around them you can't ever get through to them you just it's it's like it's a real it's a terrible situation to get in if you're going to make a, a relationship that's ongoing with a person like this many hear the word of god but they do not take it to heart they actually despise the word of God when they're doing that because if you hear the word of God and you do not do it, you do not take it to heart, you're actually despising it. And when you do your own thing, you're actually despising the word. They're not careful to apply what God says and anyone who despises God is definitely not going to care about you either. And sometime in the future, most likely sooner than later, you're going to learn this. And to no one, who is teachable to watch their life and see how that person treats the word of God, that's what you want to follow after. That's what you want to seek out. Those are the people you want to align yourself with because you want to be teachable yourself. And being wayward and rebellious to God does not make you mature, but it makes you very immature. And if love is not the banner over your life, it's a sign that your reasoning is very faulty and it takes a teachable spirit to mature and become love, which the Bible says is a determining identity of those who belong to God, that we love what he says, and we love those that he says he loves. And we need to, we need knowledge from those around us, especially those who have gone ahead of us. Don't forget that when we came into this world, we didn't know anything. And what we do know, we have learned by direct 
um, through education, through observation, and through experience, and that is not always an accurate teacher. A teachable spirit is a heart that is ready to apply what is learned and it has to abandon the old. When the old is not correct, you have to be willing to abandon it. A teachable person is anyone that can be taught, that is willing to receive instruction. Many people hear, but they have not heard. Jesus says, let him that has ears hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches in Revelation 2.7. Application of the word heard proves whether or not you are a teachable spirit. Refusal to abide by the word that you heard proves the absence of a teachable spirit and the presence of a rebellious spirit, one or the other. A teachable person is a true disciple. A disciple is a faithful, loyal, and obedient student. Christians by their profession are supposed to be disciples of Jesus Christ. And the question is, how many professing Christians are actually true disciples of Jesus Christ in the true sense of the word? A true disciple is teachable, faithful, and loyal. And you can't be faithful if you're not teachable. You can't be obedient if you're not teachable. You actually cannot be a disciple of Jesus Christ if you are not teachable. You cannot practice God's principles for a successful marriage or ministry if you are not teachable. And today we have many professing Christians, but very few who are actually disciples of Jesus Christ. And many of them are going to learn too late that their refusal to humble themselves has cost them eternity in heaven. For the Spirit of God to be crying, let him that have ears hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches, shows that there are people who are in the churches who are not giving heed to the word of God. There are a lot of them. And a true disciple should not wait for his master to repeat himself before he obeys his instruction. We all need a teachable spirit to follow Christ faithfully. A teachable spirit is a spirit of a disciple, a true, faithful, loyal, and obedient disciple. And a disciple is a diligent student who daily is following his master, learning from him as he observes him, listens to him, asks questions on issues that he does not understand. For you to be called a disciple of Jesus Christ, you need to ask yourself, am I teachable? And if you are, then you are a disciple. If you're actually following the word, which we have Bibles everywhere in this country, many countries don't, but we do so far, you can find the answer to pretty much anything you need to know in that book. If you're teachable, you will look before you will just randomly take off with your life and do what you think is right. If you don't, then you need to become teachable before you claim to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. A genuine believer will test things out and be open to learn new things, but the immature, arrogant, and proud believer will get upset, argue, shut their ears to any opposing way of thinking. This, we see this happen time and time again. If anybody's on social media, you'll see all the comments and arguments that happen. And it's painful to witness because many of these people identify as followers of Jesus when the evidence truly is they're not behaving that way. It is more painful to see them teaching others that this is acceptable behavior and leading others down a path towards hell instead of heaven. Some will completely misread and misunderstand what you have said or written. It happens all the time to us when we're trying to share. We get comments that we are kind of thrown by. But when you try to explain to them how they've missed the point or taken it a wrong way, they're just going to dig in further, get more upset, resist even more. They're going to keep on misunderstanding just because they want to. They have no desire to understand. And it seems they made up their minds that they will be right no matter what. You can't even talk. They've decided ahead of time what they want to hear and they're going to block out everything they do not want to hear. And sadly, they're exposing themselves as not very wise according to God's standard. And maybe they take joy in arguing. We know there's a lot of people like this anymore. In fact, the whole way social media works just fuels this kind of a mentality. They exist simply to argue. You can explain something to them a hundred times and they're going to refuse to hear you. And they're going to misrepresent you and they're still gonna carry on their arguments, objections, and false accusations no matter what they say, even though they know 
that they're wrong and they know that they're misrepresenting you. They know that what they're saying is not true. They're still going to do it. They have an unteachable spirit. You cannot reach them. They do not want to be reached. Their head and their heart is shut to the truth. And all of this springs from the flesh, from pride, and from selfishness. We were talking earlier that an unteachable spirit is definitely um, a picture of pride. Pride definitely fuels an unteachable spirit. They do not seek to learn, to grow, to develop intellectually or spiritually. It seems they exist to get into fights with other people. And they seem to be energized and fulfilled by that. Not only should we not waste our time on these kinds of arguments, but we really need to do one thing, and that is pray for them. We pray that they get on their knees before Almighty God and humble themselves before their pride becomes fatal, because it will. If it is not turned from, it will be an eternal fatality for them. So unless they turn, they're not in a good place. They cannot easily be helped because they don't want to be helped. And in contrast to this, the first thing any mature and thinking Christian does is show humility. They're open to being proven wrong. They're open to learning. They actually are open to proper correction. They'll readily accept differing points of view, check them out carefully to see if they might in fact be true or not, but they certainly don't take a position of disrespecting the person who has an opposing view. They won't just pull out in a big huff, take things personally, take offense when none was intended, seek to shut down all communication and debate, instantly unfriend you on social media because you have a differing viewpoint on what could be a very minor issue. These teachable people don't carry on as if you personally were attacking them. They understand that simply having facts and evidence presented to them on a complex issue is not necessarily being mean. It's called a debate. And all adults should be able to deal with facts and data and discussion like an adult. But if they can't, then avoid all discussions and debates with them. Don't even get into these conversations with unteachable people. There is a place that if somebody has done this repeatedly and you see this is just a nature that they have, it is completely acceptable for you to just let it go. Just not ever involve them in these conversations. Those who refuse to stop, who refuse to ease up, who refuse to show grace, they just need to be separated from. And we all need to take this matter seriously because we're representing Jesus and we can't act like that. If they wanna act like that, that's their business. But if you're a real disciple of Jesus, you don't get to act like that. We all need to repent and ask God to change us from within so that we don't behave this way. As Proverbs 26, 12 says, do you see a man who is unteachable and wise in his own eyes and full of self-conceit? There is more hope for a fool than for him. So what keeps people from being unteachable? They think too highly of themselves. They have no respect for other teachers, bad attitudes, not enough respect for the word of God. Actually, the strongest barrier is pride. The power of pride is its ability to convince us to trust in our own thinking and our own abilities. That's pride, leaning on your own understanding. The most destructive characteristic of pride is that it distorts or manufactures its own concept of truth. It destroys your judgment. It denies God's truth. It blocks the Holy Spirit's effort to reach us and guide us to truth. Pride conforms our thinking to what our emotions, circumstances, experiences, and voice of others have taught us. Pride convinces us that these things are accurate and true. Pride does not want to submit to God. It resists God and it submits to self. Pride has no fear of God. It encourages what the Bible calls vain imaginations and everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, 2 Corinthians 10.5. Pride is the chief characteristic of what the Bible calls a fool because that person is blind to the truth according to God. Pride hinders discernment and understanding and it always will bring destruction. Here are some signs of an unteachable attitude. 
You think that your way is the best way. One is unable to process information that is contradictory to their own perceptions without distorting it by their own set of beliefs, meaning all filters point to their own self as having all the information. And this means that one will not openly look at other points of view without calling up on their own beliefs to contaminate the nature of the issue. The more prideful an individual is, the more he will seek to protect himself from contradictory ideas that intrude into his own belief system. And it is not difficult to see this condition in the experience of one who is having difficulty being teachable. It is usually not that this person has decided that he needs to no longer learn, rather he considers himself to be the primary source of learning and knowledge and would rather simply pursue on his own quest for additional growth. Pride is normally involved in such a condition. Humility is an absolute essential if one is to be a growing learner. The Bible talks about the need for humility. Colossians 3.12, it says, Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. That's a disciple. In 1 Peter 5, 6, and 7, it says, Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. And James 4, 6 says, but he gives us more grace. That is why the Bible says God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Humility is not degrading ourselves or other people, but it's a proper attitude towards ourselves that sees and understands with clarity what we really are. Therefore, there is a need to learn. Pride tends to see no need to learn from anyone else. An unteachable person is often reactionary and they cannot submit. And indeed, this should be one of the leading characteristics of a child of God is submission one to another. Ephesians 5.21 says, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. It simply means that those who maintain a reactionary spirit will never be able to be true disciples in the sense of the word. They are not teachable. Getting offended for being corrected, this is a strong sign of an unteachable character or appearing receptive to instruction, correction, and rebuke, but secretly rejecting it in your heart. That's unteachable. Another sign of being unteachable is insecurity rather than self-acceptance and contentment. It seems strange that insecurity is a sign of being unteachable, but this problem strikes deeply into the heart of one who is unteachable. For what other reason might such a person be unwilling to let his barriers down and expose himself to something new? Change is threatening to many people. The person who is unteachable is often anxiety ridden and resistant to change because of personal threat and insecurity and therefore they become unteachable. The unteachable also show more of a nature of anger as opposed to a, a peaceful demeanor. Resistance towards learning something new usually creates a considerable amount of anger in a person, so the problems of being unteachable spill over into psychological aspects of their well-being as well. So now they develop all kinds of other problems because of the seething that goes on over them being unteachable to what they're hearing. Proverbs 9, 8 says, so don't bother correcting mockers, they will only hate you but correct the wise, they will love you. So having a teachable spirit is the most important element of success in life, ministry, and relationships. Um, the greatest waste in the world is the difference between what we are and what we could become based on whether or not we are teachable. And if you do not have a teachable spirit, you will never fulfill what God has called you and created you to be, nor will you ever enjoy what he has created for you. What are some of the enemies of becoming teachable? Fools fear the unknown, according to the Bible. A corrected life might not be as much fun as what they need to be corrected from. They like what they have. Laziness stops fools since listening, learning, and applying takes effort and energy. Pride rises in most men and women when they are corrected and criticized for their way of things. That also 
stands in the way of being teachable. Fools fear the cost of change, peer pressure, having to explain it, denying friends, all of that stands in the way. Peer pressure is influence of friends and enemies in one circle that require a status quo, so they don't want to lose that either. Humility is needed to accept correction and, inst and instruction, and most people are not humble, so therefore they can't get there. Contentment with things as they are, especially in this comfortable country that we live in, stops many from that. Loss of first love for God and Jesus Christ, which dulls any desire to do better for them. That's very serious. No ambition or passion for God due to not being saved or settling for being carnal will also cost you. Love for the world seduces the soul, steals the time, and moves God to harden you. You actually choose to become hardened by your resistance, by pushing against him. You will become hardened. You will lose the Holy Spirit. The curse of perilous times as Christians turn from the truth is another one. These get more and more serious. And the fact that most who claim to be Christians and churches simply do not care. There are more classes and seminars than there's ever been, but there's less learning. Video games and every kind of interactive entertainment distraction is now possible. It has become, um, there's so much entertainment and salacious things to do that the kingdom, anything learning about the kingdom suddenly has, it's of no value. Paul warned Ephesus of carnal sleep and death costing from these kinds of things because we're so stimulated by sin in the world. Friends not caring about growing and learning will pull you down. So watch who you hang out with. The Bible is very clear about that. You are who you keep companions with. You better watch who those are because you will all end up likely in the same place. Resentment of authority in a country like ours feeds a haughty spirit. You can not have to disagree with everything going on with your authority, but turning it into resentment and anger and leading an example of judgment and offense is a very poor decision if you're a believer. Someone who is teachable will almost always have the following traits, a spirit of humility, we can't learn anything new until we can admit that we don't already know everything. Teachable people approach life with an understanding that they can learn from anybody regardless of that person's state, status, or station in life. Such a spirit involves humility, and such humility keeps the door open for knowledge and truth to find a place in our hearts. I've met some of the greatest lessons I learned from people I learned when I was out doing ministry in the jails and just the things that people shared with me about life were things that just changed my character in ways that were so good that I wasn't hearing from other people. And most people would say that you can't learn anything good from people that are likely gonna be sentenced to prison for the rest of their lives, but I did, I learned a lot from them. To a hunger for wisdom on a daily basis, it's often said knowledge is proud because it knows so much. Wisdom is humbled because it knows so little. People who are teachable have a great desire to learn on a daily basis. Three, opened eyes and unclogged ears. You should try to learn something new every day that can help you to be a better person and a better Christian. If you intentionally look for ways to grow in your faith, God will supply the ways for you to find the truth. A big focus we have is um, now going into our city because the homeless population is growing so fast and our city has become a pretty dangerous place to live. And what we can see there and learn just from these conversations is priceless. The friendships that we make are so quality and so, these people are so genuine. There's not any needing to fake or posture when you're living on the curb. 
it's just um, refreshing to have conversations with them. For a closed mouth, an open mind and a closed mouth provide an atmosphere conducive for learning. Wisdom is the reward you get for a lifetime of listening when you would have preferred to be talking. Leaders have to speak, it's part of their job, but a leader who rarely listens is hardly learning enough to continue leading. Five, a positive outlook. Learners are able to find opportunities in every situation, especially even in the difficult ones. Those with a teachable spirit see adversity as an opportunity to do something better. We certainly don't welcome adversity. We don't like trials, but if we will look at them as an opportunity to try something we haven't done before, we will see that God will start speaking to us. Almost everything we have done here and every change we have made and almost every life and the trajectory it took big changes came from adversity. None of them came from comfort. It was always, we got pressed into a corner and we had to make a decision and something really good happened. Six, a desire to be around growing people. Learners genuinely want to learn. Therefore, most learners want to be around people who can teach them something. Surround yourself with people of wisdom, experience, and spiritual insight, and then ask God to allow some of that to rub off on you. And these don't always even have to be people that are superior in any of those ways. Early in my life, I worked with severe, profound, handicapped people, and I learned some things from them that I will never forget. They just gave me early lessons. There is something to be learned even from people that show very poor character. You can learn from just about any situation if you're seeking to learn. Seven, a willingness to apply what we learn. Um, teachable people not only pursue truth, they find ways to implement that truth in their lives. We're instructed to be doers of the word of God and the only way to be a doer is to be a learner and the only way to be a learner is to have a teacher. So then you learn and you do and that makes it a complete right response. Results of being unteachable should alarm us. When we look carefully at the individual who de demonstrates this attribute, the following descriptive characteristics are likely to be present. It is obvious that such a person will be one who does not grow in godly character much, if at all. They refuse to be ministered to and to receive the benefits of the spiritual gifts that God has given to his body, the gifts of pastor, teacher, and the gift of teaching. There's so many other gifts when you look at... Um, allowing living in an environment like this where people's gifts get to come forward and we get to see who they are. But if you see someone who never engages, who never steps out and exposes himself as needing something or even needing prayer, it's amazing. They don't last long for one because we don't get to know them. We know nothing about them. They don't fit in the community at all. They don't become part of the body. They just won't expose themselves. So they never get to be part of something that is so amazing to watch a living organism as a body like this is where all these giftings get to operate and in most places where a lot of us have been that was not an option we didn't get to try out the things that we thought we might have been gifted with and help steer each other and see the impact of that and help to hone it in here that's like the priority of what we do is that we can try to figure it out because honestly, where most of us have been, nobody cared. Nobody even cared to help us know what our gifts were. Most people that I talk to, I say, what are your spiritual giftings? They have no idea. Nobody's even ever brought that up to them. They don't know. And they say, how would I know what my spiritual giftings are? Nobody's even sat down and talked with them about that. This is critical kingdom stuff. I mean, this is... This is the reason we live, yet it doesn't come up anywhere. Everyone just expects that the pastor of the church is the pastor of the church and everyone else just sits there and listens. But actually, that the purpose of a leader is to develop the people that are following him. So our desire is that 
we all here are able to find out what we're for and then learn to operate in that so that we can go out into a bigger environment and we are getting to test drive that into our city. Another characteristic that would probably be common of a person who is unteachable is isolation from the Christian community. And this is because true Christian fellowship includes learning from one another and one who becomes unteachable does not wish to interact with those who are learning from each other because they feel they have superior wisdom. So to come into a group like ours, they would feel very superior to us and they would not fit here because they see themselves as too good for whatever group it is they're exposed to. And this, of course, does not lend itself to being good in fellowship and they will become isolated unless they find it's very unlikely they're going to find a group and the thing is they're so they make it so uncomfortable for everyone else that most people don't even want them around because they just make everyone else clam up finally there will be an ultimate lack of productivity in service to be unteachable is to develop a very twisted approach to life and the world to be out of touch with humanity and the mainstream of life is to lose one's cutting, cutting edge as far as service is concerned. You really don't even know what people are experiencing. And that puts you in the position of being a Pharisee. Such a person can only expect to surround himself with similar insecure and out of touch people. They do not know the reality of what most people are thinking and feeling around them because they don't actually care. What should change inside of us so that we become teachable? Jesus answered and said to them, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. He who does not love me does not keep my words, and the word which you hear is not mine but the Father who sent me. These things I have spoken to you while being present with you. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. The big change every one of us needs is to change the object of our affection. And this must be a constant vigilant exercise of our will. Loving Jesus will take away our love for our habitual sins or the complacent attitudes we have for what's going on around us and everything that seeks to attract us and seduce us. When we have a change of heart, we love our teacher who is God. And you must be able to say, I am who I am because I have loved the great I am. If you still have trouble with habitual sins and loving God does not seem to help, then you certainly don't have enough fear of the Lord. The two combined are powerful enough to destroy any stronghold. I remember um, when I was, there's a lot of conversations about how people can be in a long sustained environment and seemingly brought to freedom from chronic addictions, but then will return back to that same addiction only possibly very likely worse and the one reason that one of the founders said was the chief cause of that is no fear of God they have no fear of God that's why they go back to their sin they can be brought out of it they can be stripped of its um, lure for a season but if they return back to it they do not fear God that's the reason we have to see things the way that God sees them. Growing in favor with God and men is our goal, and there's only one way to do it, and that is to crave learning for change. Teachability has results, and assuming that your thoughts improve you endorses evolution, that you get something out of nothing. We do not need rationalization or realization. We need revelation from God and his chosen voices. And be careful who you view as a chosen voice. Make sure that the fruit of their life backs up what they choose to speak. The information age and growth of the internet spreads more lies than truth. Be careful what you're reading. The Bible is the absolute perfect revelation for advancing in knowledge. It says, humbly admit your ignorance with honesty. That is a big one. 
it also says, has God offered you wisdom like he did Solomon? He has. Ask God to open your eyes and show you the wonderful things in the Bible because when you do, they will jump out at you. Beg God for wisdom, cry out for it, and then seek it like hidden treasure because it's there. Pray for God to incline your heart and to make you go the way of his. Believe God can and will teach you no matter what your position is in life. And be ready even in the night to be taught by God. The more that we advance in this experiment of seven bells and now um, Rise Up Recovery, this amazing um, Tiffany's group that has come alongside us to provide great care. We are seeing women step up into things that are surprising actually the dreams and the visions and the just the different things that come up that before would have been unheard of we just wouldn't have seen that you would have expected it to be reserved for the televangelists or the stories that you hear but now we're seeing and hearing these things that are would qualify as the supernatural and we know that we don't deserve to have this close-up experience with God. We don't deserve it. All of us know that. We know we're sinners. We know that we don't deserve Him. But we also know that we're experiencing Him. And we want more. We want a lot more. And we want to see what God can do with women who really want to see what God can do with women like us. So we're really eager to see bigger and greater things and that we would walk in humility so that we could have the maximum experience this side of heaven. Precious Lord, please help us all, help us all to not walk around arrogant, to not ever let a prideful way be seen in us. Help us not to be argumentative and divisive and offended and all the things that just make you they make you look bad this, on this earth. Help us to be the ones who just show Jesus as a bright flaming light on a hill. Help us walk in love. Help us to not need to win. Help us to not need to be right. Help us to just be love. We just abandon ourselves completely to you and invite you to change us, to grow us, to teach us. Protect us, God, and help us to stay hidden in the truth. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.